Hi guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of CNB Sessions. I'm Min and today I'm very excited about our guest who is none other than the very brilliant star of the Paris Opera Ballet, Etoile Dorothy Gilbert. But before I begin the podcast, I would just like to give a special shout out to the Esplanade Singapore who made this interview possible. Esplanade is bringing Paris Opera Ballet to Singapore from June 21st to the 23rd where they'll be performing a brilliant triple bill of three iconic works, Jerome Robbins' In the Night, Crystal Pite's Seasons Canon and William Forsythe's Blake Works 1. It's going to be amazing, I'm very excited about it. So if you're in Singapore, go and get your tickets and don't miss out. And if you're not in Singapore, I'm sorry that you guys have to miss it. Unless, of course, you're in Paris and can watch Paris Opera Ballet all the time, in which case, I'm very jealous. But regardless of wherever in the world you are, I hope you enjoy this podcast with the wonderful, the amazing, the iconic Dorothy Gilbert. I always start with this question, which is, um, what did you have for breakfast? So I have a coffee, black coffee, and then I take some toast with um, ham. Right, yes. <laughs> keep it, keep it sim- simple but delicious. I know the French yeah. uh, French bread is always very French delicious. French bread, yes. <laughs> really good. Uh, do you ever sneak in like a croissant or something before, or is it, do you just like no. keep it simple? No, croissant, no, because it's really, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, a few hours after, like one or two hours after, you are already angry with the croissant. For oh, me. that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. True. So I prefer take something more, you know, consistent. Like that I can, I can do the rehearsal and the class without uh, thinking about uh, eating, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Um, I did read in an interview that you like Nutella sometimes. Is that true? Yes. Yes, it's true. <laughs> but uh, when I was younger, I was eating a lot of Nutella. But after I I I start to to eat better, you know, to have yeah. more uh, power in my uh, body because also yeah. I'm not uh, really young anymore. <laughs> so I need to be careful about uh, what I eat. So I try to yes. If I want, I can take it, but I try to to take something to make my body uh, in a really good shape to do the the, the class and the rehearsal during the weekend. When when I don't do anything, I can hit Nutella or croissant <laughs> if I want because I don't uh, need you know really good food for for the for the day. Yes, I think uh, that's a good approach, isn't it? And I have to say, you I think you are still very young. You are only thirty five. <laughs> And you, look, yes. and you look younger than that, so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you joined Paris Opera Ballet School when you were seven, is that correct? No, it's not correct. I was 12. <laughs> oh, you were 12. I'm so sorry about that. And then no, you joined, don't worry. <laughs> and then you joined the main company at 17. Yes. Um, what was your experience like at Paris Opera Ballet School? I read that you had to audition twice before you got in. Was the... Yes. Yes, but uh, you know my my parents are not uh, dancer at all. Yeah. And uh, they didn't uh, know this uh, this word and me neither. So we were like, I come from Toulouse, which is uh, in south of France. Yeah. So when we arrived to Paris, we did this first uh, this first audition, and uh, I was completely not aware about uh, <laughs> about what it was <laughs> really. So I did it like very. Um, light you know in a light mood but yeah uh, i understand that it was a really hard thing and if you want to enter you have to work a lot so the year the year after i work uh, uh i work really really hard to um, to to enter in the in the school because i didn't have all the quality that the school uh, asked for when you are young I, I didn't have a beautiful feet or I wasn't really flexible and under is not really my thing also. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, the, um, the thing that the school uh, of Paris Opera are looking for. So I had to work a lot on that and after the year after I could enter. But uh, yes, I was happy because in the school, um, I, my parents um, moved to Paris like that. I, oh, okay. I could, uh, yes, I could go back to 
my home every night, you know, and, and not be, yeah. uh, how do you say in English, uh, intern? Y yes, uh, you know, in the school, you can sleep in the school. Lots of children uh, was were sleeping in the school and yeah. I was going back, back home. So it was, for me, it was uh, really helpful. Um, and what was the um, experience like for you? Was it very difficult? Was it easy for you to adjust or did you enjoy it? Uh, it was it was really hard because um, you know in Toulouse I was doing all the technical stuff very young mm -hmm. I I was already doing fouettes and grand jeté and all the technical things and when I entered Paris I, I was like uh, in the beginning of the division so we were we were doing really simple things and I I. For me, it wasn't really dense to do only dégagé and demi plié and things like that. And in this kind of exercise, you could see only my my uh, default. Uh, how do you say? Yeah. Um, you understand yes, the I things understand. weren't yes. weren't very good in me. So it was for the be in the beginning of the classes in the school, it was really hard for me. I try to work on my on my default, <laughs> but uh, yes. And after, when we start to do technical things, that's the moment in second second division when it was easier for me because uh, I could really dance like I was. I know I could do, and yeah. it's it's the beginning for me of uh, better. You know, I was. Uh, uh, the teacher liked me better and also the director and uh, it was the beginning of a new uh, new school for me. <laughs> it, it was before and after, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So, in the beginning it wasn't easy. Of course, I'm sure it was difficult. But ballet is not easy, you know. Yeah, no. The, the world of the ballet is not easy, but also when you don't really know, you know, because my yeah. parents didn't know anything about dance, so they couldn't uh, tell me, you you should think about that, because this is important for the school uh, in Paris mm -hmm. Opera. So I discover everything alone, you know. Yeah. And uh, when you have 12 or 13 years old, it's not easy to have this... Uh, this reflection, you know, because you just yeah. want to dance, you don't think about what the opera wants to see in you, you know. Yeah. Um, but was there also maybe less pressure because your parents didn't know, so they you weren't aware? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. No, yeah. So, there, 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 I didn't have any pressure from my parents. It was just easy you do what you can and if you can't and uh, we go back to toulouse and you you <laughs> start your studying uh, school and uh, that's it <laughs> no no pressure but i didn't want to hear to, i didn't want to hear that because i want i want to do uh, i want to do ballet so i didn't want to hear that i was going back to toulouse and starting <laughs> back my studies and everything so yeah. <laughs> so that was actually motivation for you to work. Harder. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and so, um, what was it like then going to, um, you know, going from Paris Opera Ballet School to Paris Opera Ballet? Um, because when you you know become a member of the core, it's very different. I understand from being just being a student. Yeah. The most difficult thing is when you are in the core and you take class, you have like uh, 80 or 70 dancers in the class and the yep. teacher are not, they give um, correction for everybody, but they don't give you correction. So it's hard mm -hmm. to walk like you, like you walk in the school and you have, you have 10 girls in the class and all the teacher is on a girl or on, on you or on, you know, so you don't have your own correction. You have to take what the teacher say for everybody, and you have to work on your own. Yeah. And that's why it's really it's really difficult. But it was for me. It was um, uh, I don't know. It was uh, the moment I really um, did a lot of progress because I really I really learn uh, looking at. All the dancer I was, uh, I was, uh, um, how, you, how you say, uh, the, all the beautiful dancer I like, I was yeah. always behind them, 
uh, at right. class and yeah. I was looking at what they were doing and I was thinking, ah, I like that. What, uh, how can she do that? And I was trying to do it on my own. So I learned a lot by watching the person I like, you know, and trying yeah. to do the same. For example, I was like, uh, uh, I have to, uh, I love, I like to walk on my own door. So this month I will uh, walk uh, only on that. And I was, right. uh, uh, I, in the class, I was uh, putting me just behind the most beautiful girl on the in the Paris Opera Ballet, and I was try to, trying to do what she was doing, all because I didn't have the, the ability, the physical ability, I couldn't do what she was doing. But it made me, uh, you know, uh, do in a certain way, and yeah. and it was easier for me to progress. And I was doing that for you know for the under for the. Uh, feet, uh, the work of the feet, there are lots yeah. of beautiful uh, work of feet uh, in Paris Opera and I was uh, behind them and I was looking and, and you know you have all the etoiles also you can really be inspired by them. So for me it was uh, the, 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 you know, I was doing yeah. lots of progress yeah. by my home. Just like figuring out how to do it by yourself and yes, how yes, to make voilà. it work for your body. Exactly. And it was, for me, it was really easier than in the school because I really understand what I wanted to do and what the Paris Opera wants me to do. It was really at this age I, I really understand, you know, I, I had a 17 and I really was watching the girl uh, who were put, pushed by the direc direction who has uh, lots of uh, solid role or things like that. I, I was, um, I had a reflection of what they like in yeah. the, in her and what I could do to be like them, you know, a little yeah. bit. So, yeah. yeah. And um, also, you know, in Paris, Paris Opera is different from other companies because your promotion system is set up by the concours. So yes. for you, how did you deal with that pressure? Because, you know, on one hand, you have to concentrate on your performance, but, you know, Every year with the concours, you have to prepare for that also. Yeah, and for me, the concours, I was, I was really thinking when I was, uh, you know, uh, in the small class like Cadri, um, Corifé, I yeah. was really thinking it's an opportunity for me to do um, a, a solist variation on this beautiful yeah. stage. And there is, pers you know, there is a public, there is an audience. Yeah. So I was thinking it's not a concours, it's a performance. I have this beautiful opportunity to, to show to the audience what I can do. And I was really thinking like that. I was trying because I know it's, it's hard. You, f you can feel the pressure. Also, if you, you, you think like that because all of the girls around you are stressed and you, you try to be, yeah. I try to be as far as possible. Of that, but <laughs> yeah. uh, and but you know when you are sujet and you try to and you 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 have the opportunity already to do some variation during the performance and things like that, it wasn't the same thing. And because also this concours is really important because you if you are première danseuse, you don't have uh, you just do solist and you don't have any more corps de ballet. So it's a really big yeah. change, you know. So this, con yeah. this concours from sujet to première danseuse is really hard. Also because all the, all the girls are really, really good. They are technically perfect and it's, it's really, you know, it's hard also when you are in the jury. You understand jury? Yeah, yes. The person, yes. When you are in the jury, because I did, when you, you, you judge the class of, uh, of sujet, it's really hard because everybody is really good. So yeah. it's, you know, you have to be really, really the best one, but really far away to be sure to, <laughs> to pass, uh, <laughs> première nonce. So yeah, I, I, you have still to work a lot. Also, if during the year you are doing, uh, uh, solist role like I, I had, uh, I did uh, Etude and I did uh, Don Quixote, uh, Kitri, but I still have to do this con this concours and uh, yeah. yes, sometimes it, it didn't work. <laughs> no, one time for me it didn't work, but it was yeah, it was it, it's hard this one. This one was the hardest for me. So uh, why did you say it didn't work that one time? That sounds it didn't like an work. interesting story. 
It didn't work because I was uh, I was really stressful. The first mm. for the first time in a, in a concours in this concours, I was really uh, like aware that it was a concours and it it was going to change my life and uh, and uh, I I didn't dance like I could dance because I was too much uh, stressed. Yeah. So that's why it didn't work. And a girl uh, who never do a solist, uh, uh, solist part uh, during the year and uh, just dance really, really well, and she passed. So I was thinking, okay, next next time I have to be the best if I want to <laughs> to be first dancer because it's not because I'm doing some roles and I already show them I can. I can be premier dancer. It's not enough. You have to be also the best during the concours. So yeah. yeah, the year I after mean, it was okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well. I'm very happy to hear that, and you know, look where you are now. But yeah, it's such a the coco is such a difficult thing because, like you say, you can be dancing all these roles, you know, during the year, getting soloist roles and things. But if you can't, if you don't perform mm-hmm. during the coco itself, then yeah, you can't make the progression. Yes, it's right. It's right. But also, if you're working. All the year, and you are really, you have to be really the best mm-hmm. in all the concours. If you want to, if you want to to pass, you have to to be the best. So it's it's not bad because you you have to work really hard, and it's it's mm-hmm. good for a company if everybody is really working hard. All, also, just one time a year is good, you know. You normally <laughs> yeah. have to work hard all the all all the time of the year. But for some people, it's good also to have this kind of, you know, uh, Mo- concours, motivation. maintain you to yeah, motivation to to grow up and to show what you can do. No, I think it's a great opportunity. Also, because when you you know, if you have a director who didn't like you and you are not really. Uh, you don't have really good roles and things like that. You can show to the peop- to the people, to the audience, to the person of the staff. You are able to do good things. In this yeah. concours, you can show yourself. You know, yeah. also if you are not pushed by the direction. So it's it's a it's great opportunity, I think. Yeah, that's right. A lot of pressure, but also a lot of opportunity if you can perform. Yeah. Um. So after you promoted from sujet to premier dancer, you were promoted. On stage to Etoile, uh in two thousand and seven. Um, during after Nutcracker, is that correct? Yeah. So yes. I'm sure I'm sure you remember that experience. What was it like for you at that moment? You know the promotion. <laughs> did you Did you know? Were you expecting it? Did you know it was coming? No, not at all. I was thinking it could come in this part of the year because I was doing Nutcracker with Manuel Legri, You know, yeah. uh, with very Hold and very respectful Etoile from Paris Opera and uh, and I was really yeah. happy to dance with him and I was doing your uh, yes sorry Nutcracker and uh, just after I was also doing Paquita in Garnier I was doing oh, Nutcracker wow. with him in uh, yes in Bastille and and Paquita with him in Garnier and because I was dancing with him I had uh, a number of performances like if I was Etoile you know Mm-hmm. When you are premier dancer, you do one time or two times the role, but because I was dancing with him, I was doing like four not quicker and wow. I don't remember three or four Paquita. <laughs> so yes, I had a really good uh, distribution <laughs> for this time yeah. of the year. It was in November, December. So I was thinking perhaps it's gonna it's gonna arrive uh, in Paquita after the Nutcracker or something like that. But for this performance of uh, Nutcracker, it was really strange because it was a day of strike, so right, yeah. nobody has a costume. There wasn't light. There wasn't uh, the set. So we were doing Nutcracker in the big stage, huge stage of <laughs> Bastille, <laughs> empty, oh, with no. uh, nothing. Yes, with nothing, and all the you know the rats were supposed to to earth, to scare me was right, uh, yeah. there was little girls in a tutu from the school like in pink tutu <laughs> 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 and i was like uh, how how is i can kind of, <laughs> how can i be scared about these little girls so yes it was a little, it was strange it was a really strange performance and 
that's why I didn't, I really, really didn't expect because when the director and Brigitte Lefebvre went on stage, yeah. uh, I was thinking they will speak to the audience, uh, of, about this performance and thanking them to stay there and watch, watch it because they had the choice or to stay or to be, uh, how do you say, Hamburg, uh, to, to have the ticket pay back because it wasn't yeah. a full performance, you know? Yeah. So, I was thinking that, and uh, at the end, they didn't say that at all. They just say, uh, I'm going to, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, announcing that Dorothy Gilbert is going to be a Dance des So, yes, I was really, I was really happy also because my parents were there and my grandparents also were in the audience. So, I was happy to, to give them also this, uh, beautiful moment because wow. they, they were really close to me and they helped me a lot during this process. So, yeah, yeah I was, uh, no, it was really, really moving, really it's moving moments. It's a moment. spe- special moment to yeah. have all your loved yeah. ones there watching you as well. Yeah. You know, when you're at Etoile, it's, you know, you, you've achieved this promotion, like the highest ranking in Paris Opera, and it's a, like a, how do I say, a validation, but it's also, a lot of uh, pressure because you are still the same person, you know, it's not like you yeah. get promoted and then you wake up with special skills, you're the same person. Yes, no, but but that's, that's funny what you say, yes, because I was thinking, yes, because it's true, it's true. When I was young and I was looking at the etoile, I was thinking, oh, they are perfect, they are so beautiful, they are na 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 na. And when I was it's while I was thinking, but I'm not perfect. I have still my, my things to work. I have some default things. And I was thinking, but it's, uh, I didn't have a, you know, a fairy, uh, <laughs> who gives me all the good things, you know? Yeah, I was like- the same person with my, with my quality and with my defaults. So yeah. I, I, I was thinking it's just, another way to work but I didn't really you know it was the contrary for me I did I I I had lots of more liberty when I was at all because when I was premier dancer when I I perform I was I I wasn't aware about that but I feel it after I was at all I was uh, always thinking um, I have to prove that I can be a all so there, yeah. there was this little pressure I had. I didn't really notice that, but after I can feel because I was really more free. When I was at I was just dancing for, you know, for the audience and nothing else. I didn't have to prove anything. So for me, it was a, a relief to be at Yeah. Really. Um, and so, you know, part of being like you say, you know, you're performing for the audience, you weren't worrying about this pressure. And I think a big part of ballet, especially as a professional dancer, is the performance aspect. You know, I think a lot of yeah. the technique is important, but the artistry is very, is, you know, that, you know, that adds that, I guess that je ne sais quoi, that to, oui. to make a performance extra special. So for you, um, how do you find those moments of artistry, like if you're preparing for a role or when you're on stage dancing? Mm. For for me, it's the most important because the, I, when I prepare a role, I I work a lot of the technique technical yeah. things, but just to be free after stage because when you are on stage, there is only the story and the music who counts. You know, for me, I mm. I didn't think about anything else about. Uh, just the, you know, the story I have to tell and the, 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 the connection with the partner and the music yeah. is the most important. I didn't think about anything else. So that's why I have to prepare very well all the technical stuff before and after like that I'm ready, I'm, I'm ready and I just feel completely free on stage to be what I have to be if I'm, you know, Juliette or Giselle or anything. And yeah. I love doing uh, this uh, kind of ballet with lots of interpretation because yeah. it's uh, it's what it's really what I like in ballet. It's not the technical stuff. The technical stuff is just a way to express yourself yeah. in uh, in different uh, sentimental stories. <laughs> yeah, because the 
the technique is not the final point. The final point no. is the performance, no. right? Yeah. It's just a way to arrive there because the, the audience didn't want to, they want to think they can go home and do the, everything we did on stage because it's, it, it has to be really easy, you know? Yeah. They, they could think, oh, I can be a dancer. So it, it looks like so easy. This is important. Yeah. And also the, the most important thing is to, to, to make them feel, you know, uh, entering this story and and completely forget their problems in their life and everything. You you have to to take them and to bring them to the story you are telling. This is the most important for me. Yeah, it's like a what's the French word? I can't remember, like in in kind of performance, like un, unforgettable. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. unforget. Yes, yes, yes. It's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so for you, what have been your favorite roles to uh, dance or perform? Well, all the beautiful stories, <laughs> 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 like uh, Roman and Juliet, or Onegin, or all the love stories, you know, very yeah. strong, or Manon also, and and also because this this kind of ballet have, uh, uh, have a beautiful music and the music yeah. is really important for me because you have to show the music in your movement if the music is beautiful the, your movements are beautiful you know also <laughs> yes it's, uh, it's um, really connected and also for your emotion it's really easy to have the right emotion when the music tells you the emotion you know yeah you just have to listen and be there you know mm-hmm. yeah so it's uh, this kind of um, of ballet and are there any roles or pieces you would like to dance in the future? I would like to dance. Yeah, I, I didn't. The, the last ballet I would like to dance, I didn't have yet. It's um, uh, La Dame aux Camélias, Camélia yes. Daman from uh, John yeah. Meyer. Voilà. This is the last one I want to do before I retire. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, now, now we have it on the record, so we'll just like send, make sure that you know, everybody can hear it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I also want to talk a bit about um, you as a mother. You have a beautiful daughter I saw on your Twitter, Lily. Um, <laughs> she's beautiful. Um, what was it like for you coming back to ballet after giving birth? Because I know that I have friends who are professional dancers and some of them have given birth as well. And, you know, the process for them of coming back is not always very easy. You know, your body is not the same anymore. What was it like for you? Um, yeah, uh, it was um, really strange because uh, I have this this uh, quality that I have a body really easy. You know, I don't have to, to do some sort of... Uh, uh, a regime to be fit or I, I, I most, I'm really, uh, you know, uh, uh, dit? tone. I have a yes. tone, uh, body yeah. more than flexible. So, yeah. yes, it, it's my, I'm like that, you know. So yeah. after my pregnancy, I was thinking, oh la la, I have a big, big, uh, <laughs> big, uh, how you say, man, um, ventre. A uh, big uh, uh, bump, B- big right, bump, right. really big bump. Voilà. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, how my um, how my stomach is going to come to normal? It's uh, it's really big, and I was thinking lots of things. And after after I give birth, and after three weeks, I was like like before. My body wow. was was remembering like everything. Just for the shape, you know. After right. to come back to dance, it was uh, another another thing. But I was more a little bit more flexible because uh, because of the pregnancy, I think. So for me, it was easier because it was uh, one of my default to be yeah. to be not flexible, and I was more flexible because of all the hormones and things. And I still have this this tone because it's 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 natural for me. Uh, right. Tone muscle, so it was. Uh, it wasn't really hard to come back. Really, I give birth on March, and in July I was doing a performance in Japan, and wow. yeah, I, it. 
I was a little bit afraid because it was I it was one year and some months I don't remember how many I didn't put a foot on stage so this right. was, I was more scared about that yeah. but for the body it was it was really okay and in September I was doing etude you know in Paris Opera this yeah. uh, this ballet really difficult <laughs> <laughs> and I did it so yeah it was it wasn't really really hard for me at the end. It was, yeah, it was okay. But also because I have, you know, I have a uh, easy body. Yeah. And so, like, getting for back them. the the fitness and the stamina, for you, that was also not too difficult as well. No, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, wish I, had, I wish I had your, your fitness. <laughs> Yeah, but this is the quality of, uh, thank you, thank you, mom, and thank you, dad. <laughs> I think a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, do you think you will, when she's older, do you think you will let Lily try ballet? Uh, I think it's difficult because she, she, I don't want her to do that because I'm doing that. Right. Because it's really hard and you have to be really passionate. If not, yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah. And also, I know she has a really strong character, you know, <laughs> already. <laughs> and wow. I don't think she she will like to be to be the daughter of Dorothée Gilbert. Because in right. the world of the dance, she will, she will always be the daughter of Dorothée Gilbert. And she, yeah. I think she won't like this kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> she yeah. wants to be her. She doesn't want to be the daughter of uh, of her mother, you know. Yeah. So I think it's it's a thing it's going to be hard for her, and I don't really want. Also because you know it's really hard to be an étoile, and yeah. the the chance for her to be étoile is really really small. And yeah. for your children, you want them to be better than than you was, you know. Yeah. You want them to to be more or something, but the more she can be, it, it, it's going to be the same. You know, yeah. étoile. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it's not, and she's not, it, it's not easy for her to go, to arrive there. So I, no, for me, <laughs> she, she will, she will have to, to, to really, really, really want to do that if, if, uh, to do that, <laughs> to yeah. do dance. Because <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's gonna be, it's not gonna be a good thing for her. Also because of this, of his, of her character. Yeah, she has to be her own um, individual. Yeah. Sounds like sounds like she exactly. Is. Well, it sounds like yeah. uh, you're uh, based on that. I think it sounds like you're very good and very uh, sensible mother. <laughs> I try to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you'll be done when you come to Paris Opera Ballet. Comes to Singapore, you'll be dancing in a this very beautiful Robin's piece called In the Night. Um, what do you enjoy about dancing th- that piece? It's it's very nice to watch as an audience. Yeah, it's, well. yeah, I I really love this piece in the night from Robbins. It's a really for me. It's a, it's like a jewels, you know. It's mm-hmm. a perfect ballet. It's the musicality is so is incredible. You know, yeah. you yeah. every step you do are right in the music. Yeah. The music, the music is the steps you are doing. So it's really, yeah. it's a really great feeling to to dance it, to dance it because you are, you are the music really in this piece, and it's yeah. important to it's important if the audience look at you without hearing the music, she has to imagine this music. You know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. And um, and all the pas de deux are really beautiful. I did all all the pas de deux <laughs> because I did the first one and the second one. And this time, for the first time, it will be the third one. Oh, this is and the first the, time you're doing the third one. Yeah, it's the first oh. time. But I re- I really love it because it's a really you know there is lots of uh, character in in this pas de deux, and uh, and I have a really good partner, so we, it's going to be great. And um, it looks. You know, it's such an elegant looking piece and, you know, like you say, ballet looks so effortless, but I was watching it and the lifts and some of the um, choreography in the pas de deux is actually very challenging. So yeah. for you, um, how do you, 
How do you manage that? It's not me, it's a partner. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a really good one, so it's easy. No, it's true. It's a, But it's important to have a really good partner in this kind of piece because, as you said, there are really some really tricky stuff. <laughs> yeah. But if you have a good partner, it's really easy. So And I have one, so it's really good. And uh, we dance on Egin also together. Um, one year ago, I think, and uh, we know very well each other because we were in school together. Oh, <laughs> okay. Rodrigue Bazaar. Yeah, we, it was the same promotion. So yes, we 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 are used to dance together from years, and uh, he's a really good partner. Really, uh, so yeah, it's easy with him. You just uh, do it, and it's working, and you don't have to think about how to do and na 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 because he's doing it really naturally without working, you know. Right. A little bit. After you have to work on on the shape and everything, but he already managed to do all the tricky stuff. He's a really good partner. <laughs> and also, in the night is a very it's a very emotional piece. It's I mean the third dance that you're doing is you know it's three different relationships, and the third one you're doing is a very passionate, uh, temperamental uh, relationship. It seems like so for you, um, what. What are you thinking of in the moment when you are dancing that? Like, how do you find those kind of emotions? Um, yes, I, I like to, to think about my, because I'm, I'm half Spanish, you know? My mother is completely Spanish. So I have this kind of temperament, you know, a little bit like, Oh, I, I, I don't like you. Uh, yes, I like you. No, I don't like you. <laughs> a little bit like that. So I just think about my, my origins. <laughs> it's, it's going out really easy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Um, and did you come to Paris? Did you come? Have you visited Singapore before with Paris Opera? Um, I know they came with Giselle. Did you come with them on tour? Like, I think I didn't come. So this is your will be your first time in Singapore. Yeah. Um, yes. Is there anything you're excited to do? I mean, of course, besides the dancing, are you excited to visit anything or maybe try any food? Have you done any? Uh, do you know anything about Singapore yet, or you you know have not no, I had didn't. the time? <laughs> I didn't, I really didn't have the time yet to just look at what I should do there or, yeah. or eat or, but if you have any ideas, I, I will write them down. No, yes, oh, I didn't course. really, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't have the time to, to do the to-do list there yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to eat some different food and because I, I really like, uh, I'm, I like it, <laughs> eating. <laughs> and discover, yeah, new, new food and, yeah. Uh, well, the food in Singapore is, I think all of it is very delicious and we have some very beautiful, uh, gardens to visit. Um, a lot of dancers when ah. they tour to Singapore, they always want to come back. So I will. Ah, cool. I will go and like, I'll look for you, look for you on Instagram and I'll just send you a list of things you can try. Oh, yes. Cool. With pleasure. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love introducing people to Singapore food because I always want them to come back again. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy to go there. Even though you're only 35 years old, you've accomplished so much already in your career. So for you, what keeps you going in ballet? Like, why do you still keep dancing and why do you love it so much? Uh, for me, it's for the the emotion I can feel on stage, you know, when yeah. I'm dancing some roles or the emotion I can have with, with my partner. So for me, the partner is really important. I really want to dance with 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 boys. I really feel something, you know. Yeah. It's really important. And yeah, just to... To have emotions and give emotions to the audience. Yeah. It's the, it's the, it's the thing who keeps me, you, you know, going and walking and uh, doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. It's the, all the, the emotion I can feel on stage. And um, besides that, ballet is also, like we said, it's so difficult and it's so tiring and it's so all-consuming. So for you, how do you find the balance of 
you know, working hard and always trying to improve, but also, you know, giving yourself time to maybe rest and, you know, relax a little bit? How do you find that balance? Sometimes it's, it's hard to find this balance, but also I try really to sleep uh, well. I, because I'm a, I'm a big <laughs> sleeper, I can sleep. I'm feeling well when I sleep nine hours yeah. during the night. Yeah. So yeah. for me, this is really important. I try really to 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 have this uh, time, and uh, I'm taking care of my body. I have some kine, really good kine who are doing massage, and uh, yeah. I try to eat well. And yeah, and some, there is different periods in the year. Sometimes it's really, you, you have lots of rehearsal, lots of performance. It's, uh, it's hard and sometimes it's more light. So I try to, to find this balance to recover a little bit when it's lighter and to, to be in shape when it's really hard. And, yeah. uh, yeah, I try to, I try to, to listen to my body also mm-hmm. more than before. And what do you enjoy doing when you have time off? Uh, be with my daughter. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with her and taking time to do things with her. Yeah, this is really important also for me. And let's finish off with this question, which is, what's one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? I, I will just say, do what you did. <laughs> <laughs> do what you did. I work a lot like crazy. I was doing uh, all all the the lesson and also particular lesson during the weekend. I was doing uh, one class uh, Friday night, one class uh, Saturday morning, one class Saturday night, and also in the last year uh, one class on Sunday. And I I really work really hard. Yeah. So I I didn't have any any advice. Just do what what i what you did it was it was great i i yeah. managed to rise there i managed to rise there and when the people in the beginning nobody was thinking about me as an étoile so i'm happy for that <laughs> yeah i think that's like that's a good piece of advice for your younger self you are an étoile <laughs> you have a you have a beautiful family you have great parents <laughs> yeah i think yeah so. no i have nothing to i just Keep going. <laughs> Keep doing that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really enjoyed talking to you. And I'm sure that oh, so you. many people in Singapore will be very excited to watch not um, you and as well as the rest of um, Paris Opera Ballet come here and perform. It's, it's going to be such a treat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. Have a wonderful day. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed listening to that conversation I had with Dorothy. Big thank you to the Esplanade, Paris Opera Ballet and Dorothy for making this happen. If you guys have any comments or thoughts about the podcast that you just heard, please let me know. And of course, if you have any guests you'd like to see me talk to in the future and interview, please feel free to let me know in the comments as well. And of course, do remember to check out Cloud and Victory Dancewear. Um, I designed it all by myself. It's sassy and ethically made and very, very comfortable. And you can get 10% off your first order when you sign up to our newsletter. Just head over to our website at cloudvictory.com. Thank you so much again, guys, and have a wonderful day. Don't forget to eat pizza.